Hello, everyone. Hey, Molly. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, welcome to our next session, everyone. Um, we're live with Lucky Orange. We might have gotten a little cut off on the last session, but I just want to say again, congrats to Elijah Davis, uh, our next gift card winner. So the team will be reaching out with a $50 gift card. Um, the ShipBob team will be in touch. But right now, I'm excited to present Molly. She is the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Lucky Orange. Molly's going to share how to segment your audience to optimize marketing spend, increase AOV, and refine advertising campaigns across channels. So with that, I will pass it over to you, Molly. Thanks, Lindsay, and glad to be here with everyone today. Um, as Lindsay said, I'm Molly Stats. I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships here at Lucky Orange. And for those of you not familiar, Lucky Orange is a suite of conversion rate optimization tools. And what we really help you do is understand what's going on on your store. So contrary to say like a Google Analytics that maybe tells you how long people are on each of your pages or which pages they visit, we really focus on what's happening on your store and the things that Google Analytics can't tell you, like how people are engaging with certain products, um, where they're spending time on your store, how they're interacting with your navigation, those sorts of things. So we really want to give you that front row view to what's happening on your website so that you can be able to optimize it. So today I want to spend some time talking with you all about mastering audience segmentation. And if you guys are running omni-channel marketing strategies or really have a big emphasis on omni-channel customer acquisition for your stores and for your businesses, this important concept of segmenting your audience is going to be something you really want to pay attention to. So let's kind of dive right in. So bear with me here. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about segmentation and what it is. And a lot of this is probably going to sound like no duh, of course, but bear with me for a moment so we can lay some groundwork here. Segmentation at the very highest level is really focusing on identifying characteristics of certain cohorts of people that are visiting your website or store. So you can do this in a lot of different ways. And you can see some examples here on this slide, but you can segment by locations, which is a pretty easy one to do. A lot of Shopify stores or different merchants may focus on particular areas of the world, and that's great. And obviously, you want to know how those areas are performing. You can also segment off of UTM sources. So where are people coming to your store from and how are they engaging with their store once they get there? So that's an option. Um, different sources, of course, like Instagram, Google PPC, but also things which I honestly think are more impactful in some ways. Visitors that convert versus visitors that don't convert or maybe visitors that have a certain AOV or return visitors versus first time customers. That's really what segmentation is, is identifying the cohorts or the metrics you care about most and then creating that section of visitors where you really analyze and understand those visitors so you can be able to make decisions on how to market to them, how to engage with them and their overall personalization experience. So. Talking about that a little bit, let's move on to talking about why segmentation is any good. We know what segmentation is, but why should you do it? And I think one of the first and most obvious one is allocating marketing budgets. So if you have certain segments of visitors, how do you know where to spend your money on different advertising or different coupons or promos for that segment if you don't understand what visitors you should be targeting? So making budgeting decisions is a great way to use segmentation to help you understand where is your marketing dollars best spent. That kind of goes into the next point we're going to talk about here and focusing your advertising efforts. So how do you know how you should talk to certain audiences? From your omni-channel strategies, are you talking to all audiences the same? And if you are, that's probably not a good idea. But how do you know how to talk to those audiences? So segmenting visitors to understand what they're most interested in, how they're engaging, um, how much money they're likely to spend on your store. If they're converting, what are those visitors that are converting doing versus visitors that are not converting? You can understand and impact your advertising efforts based on the segmentation of those visitors. And really what's importantly is where do you go from here? What's next? How do you know what's working if you don't segment those visitors to understand that audience is a good audience for you? And you should pursue more audiences or more segments that look like that. Or more importantly, sometimes what's not working? But how do you know what's not working if you're not paying attention to the certain visitors and how they're interacting? So it can really help you set up for understanding what's next. And long-term success. 
One of the things we talk to our customers about all the time is now is the most important time. I can't even believe I'm saying this in early summer, but now is the most important time to start setting up those segments of visitors you that are your highest performing or that you want to identify as your highest performing so you can help prepare yourself as you head into the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the big push, the busy season of holidays. If you start that segmentation and understanding your audience right now, you can have better informed advertising campaigns, better allocated marketing budgets, and just a better plan of attack on how you're going to capitalize and optimize on the Black Friday, Cyber Monday time if you start the segmentation efforts now. So it's really, really important to understand what's going on and get started segmenting today and understanding your customers to set you up for the success in the long term. So we talked about what is segmentation. We talked about why it's important. But now you actually have to get into the nuts and bolts of actually analyzing your customers and doing the segmentation. And I'm sure it's not surprising to most of you on this uh, webinar that this year over last year, e-commerce sales have grown 8.5% compared to 1.1% of the in-store sales. And that's, again, not surprising. People are shopping online. People are wanting to be online. But one of the things that's interesting, especially as you think of omni-channel strategies, you may have a robust channels in place that you're targeting this group and this group and this group and this channel. But if you're segmenting and really diving into each of those channels you're focusing in and understanding the behavior, one of the things we've actually worked with a customer on that they found very surprising as a part of their omni-channel approach is they had invested a lot of different, lot of different areas. But they were seeing as they segmented their traffic on visitors that converted, they were seeing one of the sources that were coming in to high converting visitors was actually TikTok. And it's really interesting because they weren't advertising on TikTok. They didn't have their own personal TikTok accounts, but they were seeing a high number of converting visitors come in from that source. And they dove in a little more and actually realized that there was an influencer on TikTok that was actually promoting their product and sending people to their website to buy their product. That was a cool opportunity because that wasn't a channel they had previously explored, but it allowed them to connect with that influencer and learn more about that influencer and how they could work together and introduce a new channel into the marketing mix. But they wouldn't have been able to do that if they weren't segmenting their visitors, understanding the traffic that was coming to their website to be able to capitalize on that relationship. Another key point of segmenting visitors, depending on, you know, what your different cohorts are or your KPI metrics that you're trying to achieve, is understanding which group and which audiences are doing poorly. Maybe you see a really good, uh, you know, strong AOV, strong order value, strong engagement from those customers that are returning and loyal customers that have been in that group over five, you know, purchased from you over five times. But really, you really struggle with that first time customer. And so you can really dive in to understand that first time customer, what experience are they having when they come to my website? And you can watch session recordings and heat maps to say, maybe there's a broken button that, you know, the experienced users are getting used to passing by and understand how to navigate the website. But these first time users are really struggling. Understanding what's working well, but also what's not working well is equally as important. And you can see that through the different audiences that are converting or not converting. So another example um, that we have seen with customers is we had a customer that was watching a lot of session recordings and they were segmenting by the visitors that converted versus visitors that were not converting. And what they noticed is that 75% of all their visitors that were converting were using a promo code. This gave them a second to say, hey, maybe we didn't think our promo codes were that big a deal or had that big an impact on our conversion rate, but watching these session recordings proves that that's actually true. So they spent time going through a whole promo code strategy, what that looks like, what made sense financially for their business from a marketing standpoint for their business. So if they weren't segmenting, again, off those converting versus non-converting customers, watching session recordings that showed them that all a majority of their converting customers were using promo codes, it sent them down a whole nother path of their business strategy they hadn't previously considered. So it's just another example of ways that you can use segmentation to really impact the business decisions you're making. On this next slide, I'm going to walk you guys through a specific example of a jean store. And this jean store was using um, Facebook and Facebook ads to really promote their jeans. And so they promote 
footed, all of their Facebook ads, all of the creative, all of the content was re resulting around jeans and promoting their jeans. They had some sub products, if you will, like wallets and denim jackets and denim shirts that they also have listed on their website. So I want to flip you over there. And this traffic in particular, this is a session recording segmented by people coming from Facebook. And more specifically, people coming from Facebook ads that converted. And you see, I'm actually going to restart this one for us because it looks like the video started ahead of it. But in this session recording, what you're going to see here is the person came to the website from the Facebook ads and they are actually um, viewing the jeans and they're viewing this pair of the Sean jeans and they seem pretty interested in it. That's great because you're like, great, on my Facebook ads, I was promoting the jeans. The people here seem to be interested in the jeans and they're spending the time reading over it, learning more about the specific jeans they probably saw in your Facebook ad. What you're going to see here as they scroll down the page, though, is, and something we recommend for all e-commerce stores, a section of you may also like or other recommended product. And here you can see them hovering on some bags and this denim jacket here. And they're actually going to click into this denim jacket. Again, keeping in mind that our Facebook ads were promoting the jeans. And they seem to be spending quite a bit of time engaging with this denim jacket, reading the description, scrolling more. And that's the power of session recordings, that you couldn't see this from Google Analytics, how they're engaging with your descriptions. Maybe you want to make some tweaks or changes to that. But there, there seem to be spending a lot of time on this jacket, which is something you never were promoting in your Facebook ads. But again, by segmenting off of Facebook visitors that converted, you see that this visitor is actually adding to the cart. And if you watch a hundred more of these session recordings, you're going to see something very similar where a lot of your Facebook traffic is more interested in your related items than you were the jeans. What does this mean for you? You can actually start updating your Facebook ad creative and ad copy to feature these denim jackets versus your jeans. And maybe you'll have a higher, even higher converting Facebook audience. So again, it's one of those focuses of how you can use segmentation to really understand what people are doing on your website that are converting and then make changes across all of the different channels you're engaging with based on the behavior that you're seeing on the website. So We've seen some examples. We've talked about why it's important, what it is. But I want you guys to also keep in mind that there's some things you should consider because every segment doesn't have to be treated, treated completely different from one another. You may see some overlaps between your segments. So, for instance, you may be selling primarily focused on selling your jeans in EMEA region of the world. But you start to notice that you're seeing significant traffic increase, maybe from Brazil. And they seem to be behaving in the similar way that your traffic from EMEA is performing. Use what's working in EMEA to that audience in Brazil to really make a bigger impact there without having to reinvent all your marketing campaigns and all of your strategies. So how are your segments overlapping? And you may find things that you didn't think were connected that may ended up being connected, like preferences from different regions of the world or different channels. What is this segment like and what is this segment not like? In our last example, you thought the Facebook was going to love your jeans, but in reality, they were actually more interested in your jackets understanding by making by able being able to segment these different audiences and not only show them things they like but avoiding showing them things they don't like or things that don't resonate them can save a lot on your ad creative and time your marketing copy Another example we see when working customers before, they had this ad that they were running on Instagram that they were convinced was going to do well and they thought it was clever and funny. And then they had this other ad that they were less excited about, but they listened to their agency and they said, hey, we'll give it a shot. The ad that was less fun and they were less excited about actually was higher converting for them than the ad that they were super excited about. It helps remove that personal bias of the customers to say, or your team to say, hey, we really like this ad. We think it's going to work. And by segmenting their customers by the ad that they saw and how they converted or their order value or whatever you're looking at, it can really take the bias out of making decisions and say, the data is telling us that the customers likes this, doesn't like this. This is what we should go with moving forward. And again, kind of the final point here is what have other uh, segments historically been attracted to this? So again, rinsing and repeating. If you know that audiences in the past, using the jeans example, that have liked the denim jackets also like your travel cases, 
you can start promoting your travel cases to an audience you already know has a propensity to like your denim jackets. And it saves you the time and research of having to do that testing and do that discovery all over again. So want to leave you with a few key takeaways because I know we're coming up at time here. Um, make sure segmentation is important, but decide who and what you want to segment off of. What are your KPIs? What are the things that tells you this is working? This segment is most successful. And then test, test. And just when you think you figured it out, you're going to have to continue to stay on top of the segmentation channels like the TikTok or a different region of the world could introduce itself that enters to kind of a whole new level of engagement and study that you need to do with them. So I will leave you guys for now. Um, I know we're up at time. So if you have any questions, you can um, shoot them over to me via email. We're super engaged on LinkedIn as well. So love to have conversations and talk with everyone then. Um, but yeah, email me. Love to engage the conversation more and talk about segmentation or anything else in your e-commerce world or omni-channel strategies. So thank you everyone uh, for your time today and I hope um, you enjoy the rest of the sessions. Awesome, thanks so much, Molly. If you have any questions for Lucky Orange, definitely head over to their booth and drop them in the booth chat. Um, otherwise, we'll see you at the next session. Have a good one, Molly. Bye. Bye.